What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. I'm Katia, and in today's lesson, we're going to learn five super useful grammar structures that will help you sound more advanced and score higher when taking your GAE and CPE exams. You can use them both in speaking and writing, and I'm sure they can be your real lifesavers. Are you ready? So, let's get into it. So, let's begin with our first grammar structure, which is the plus comparative adjective or adverb, plus the and the same, comparative adjective or adverb. We use this grammar structure to show that one thing depends on another. And now let's look at some short sentences. The first example, the sooner, the better. The more, the better. Or the more, the merrier. It means that the more people come, the better. More examples, the sweeter, the better. The bigger, the better. Or the further, the better. I usually use this sentence when it comes to traveling. The further, the better. And now let's look at longer sentences. For example, the more you travel, the more open-minded you become. Another example, the less plastic we use, the cleaner the environment will be. Or the more you practice your English, the better it will get. Or another example, the younger you are, the easier it's to learn a new language. Or the more sport you do, the fitter you get. And the last example, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. This expression means that the more important a person is, the more difficult it's for them to lose their importance. And now let's move on to our second structure, which is not merely as plus adjective plus as. We use this structure to show and emphasize a big difference. And now let's look at some examples. The first example, the film isn't nearly as engaging as the book. It means that the book is much more engaging than the film. So we show a big difference. In Spanish, it's la peli no es ni de lejos tan interesante como el libro. So this structure in Spanish would be ni de lejos. More examples, Spain isn't nearly as eco-friendly as Denmark. It means that Denmark is way more eco-friendly than Spain. Another example, our modern lifestyle isn't nearly as relaxing as it was in the past. Or I'm not nearly as sporty as you are. Another example, the new campaign isn't nearly as effective as the one we carried out last year. Or, for example, I think that traveling alone isn't nearly as enjoyable as with your friends. You can use this structure in speaking part three, task two, when you have to choose one or two prompts. For example, you can say to me, the issue of overpopulation isn't nearly as urgent to address as pollution, which means that pollution is way more important to tackle. Another useful structure that you can use in your exams is conditionals. You can use zero, first, second, third, or a mixed conditional. I'm going to give you one example for each. Zero conditional, if there is a healthy work-life balance, employees tend to be more productive. The first conditional, if everything goes according to plan, Denmark will be fossil fuel-free by 2050. The second conditional, if I could travel anywhere in the world, I'd pick New Zealand. The third conditional, if they had been more cautious, the accident wouldn't have happened. And one example for a mixed conditional, if the government had taken the right measures, we wouldn't be in this situation now. Let's continue. The fourth grammar structure that I recommend using is inversion. 
Basically, it means that you invert the subject and the verb to make a sentence more emphatic and dramatic. Let's look at some examples. The first one, not only is it vital to ban plastic bags, but also to cut down on excessive plastic packaging. So here it's not only is it vital. So first the verb to be and then the subject it. Another example, never have I seen such beautiful scenery. Here the same, we invert the subject and the verb. Never have I seen. Another example, only when you move abroad do you realize how much you love your home country. And the last example, little did we know how quickly the coronavirus would spread. I'm thinking of making an English bit focused on inversion in order to explain it in more detail. If you're interested, let me know in the comments below. And last but not least, the grammar structure number five that I recommend using is modal verbs for speculation and deduction. It's especially useful for speaking part two when you have to speak about two pictures and you need to deduct and speculate. The first modal verb that you can use is must plus infinitive. We use it when we are sure that something is true. For example, you've been working all day. You must be exhausted. So we are sure that the person is exhausted. And if we are sure that something was true in the past, we use must plus have plus past participle. For example, he didn't come to the get-together. He must have forgotten. And we can contract must and have. He must have forgotten. Must have. And if it's a deduction about an action in progress at the moment of speaking, we use must plus B plus ing. For example, he isn't answering. He must be driving. Another modal verb that we can use to speculate is can't plus infinitive. We use it when we're sure that something isn't true. For example, the lights are off. He can't be at home. And if we talk about something in the past, we would say he can't or he couldn't have failed the exam. He's a brilliant student. Also, we can use modal verbs like might, may or could when something is possible. 50%. For example, she might be excited about her upcoming trip. And one example for the past, they might not have met the deadline. And the last modal verb that you can use to speculate is should. We use it when we expect something to happen. For example, he should be here any moment. And one example for the past, they should have arrived by now. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this English bit and found it useful. If you want to brush up on your grammar, I recommend using Grammar Books by Murphy. They are my favorite because you have a very clear explanation and then lots of exercises and at the end of the book you can find solutions to check your answers. You can find the links in the description box. And of course, if you liked this lesson, don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up, to subscribe to my channel and catch me on Instagram. With that being said, thanks for watching and see you next week. Ciao for now!